Hello everyone, this is Gorax. This week, beside Arcane Eagle, tower players will also get Darmeth, a second generation hero. This is a hero I have been waiting for as a tower main. Astral was in a bad shape and had to be replaced by Adela who started to struggle recently as well. Now, with the addition of Arcane Eagle, Astral can take on difficult enemies he could not previously. It does not always result in a win, but it is a big improvement even with basic tower castle combo. In this video, I'll try to show you the power of Darmeth, starting with her skills, adjutant ability, as well as a spell mark choice. After all that, we will try different formations, starting with the basic one and ending up with the one I find the most successful. Keep in mind, all you will see may change as it is being recorded on a test server environment. Let's start! Let's go over Darmeth's skills first. So the first spell she's got is fast attacks, which increases attack speed of units and movement speed of them as well in a large range for 10 seconds. Then we got Lightning Ball, which deals damage to all enemy units in a certain age, a certain range. Then we got Air Hour, which deals air spell damage on enemy units within a certain range and decreases the target's accuracy by 30 seconds, lasting for 8 seconds. And her ultimate is Electric Field which increases the unit damage and unit damage reduction of all friendly tower units by 20% each. Also inflict silence on all enemy units and deal air type spell damage equal to 2% of max HP to them every second for 6.8 seconds. And this is actually working. It's not as bugged as it was with Archibald. Now, as you can see, all her spells are air because she goes well with air magic. And now the best choice when it comes to the mark will be, as for most of the heroes, uh, this will be a time stop. Time stop. Uh, if you can't afford time stop as you run in tower as your secondary, you can choose between uh, other uh, spells that provide crowd control, like Mystic Domain or Petrify, or you can go for some kind of a buff spell as well, preferably the air one as it will proc Magic Awakening. Now, when it comes to the masteries, these are the masteries I went with. Mysticism, you always need mana. Uh, I think uh, Dharma does, does not go well with mana. She doesn't have as much mana region as other generation, generation 2 heroes, as she's spamming these spells. And next, we want first aid, as it increases the healing. And the healing is currently in the meta, okay? This is something you'll definitely want. And another mandatory choice will be air magic to reduce the cooldown of air magic spells. You want to cast as many as possible, and this is also why you want the mysticism, as these two will go well together. Now, the third option is optional. You could go for archery to boost arcane eagle, uh, arcane archer damage. However, I took tactics to improve the defensive uh, capabilities of my dragon golem and paladin, as dragon golem currently is the weakest tank. Now let's look at her speciality, tower tactics that influence the combat effectiveness of different faction units and a non-artifact spell cast by a friendly unit can trigger magic awakening for friendly units. Upon gaining energy, tower units gain 5 seconds of high morale, upon losing energy, they trigger magic awakening once. Decreases the combat efficiency of enemy neutral units by 2%, when tower units trigger magic awakening or gain high morale, Increases the unit damage and crit hit damage by 2% each, lasts for the whole battle and stacks up to 25 times. And this is this skill is effective when hero is not on the battlefield. Now, 4 star speciality increases Darmus mana regeneration by 4. Upon triggering Magic Awakening, increases tower units, air defense, and air attack by 15 each for 8 seconds. Meanwhile, deals damage equal to 50% of all attack to the large. To the target unit, cooldown is 4 seconds. This is what makes her so strong, as the tower units will deal more damage and be uh, have, will have more damage against tower units, as they are focusing on air defense right now. Now, her adjutant skill is called Power of Luck, and when friendly tower units are inflicted with bleed, plaque, slow, deter, burn, or disease, they gain a shield equal to 20% of their max HP for 10 seconds with 80% chance or gain invincibility for 1 second with a 20% chance. For the next 12 seconds, increases the crit hit by 100. Cooldown is 25. These apply it. These effects cannot be dispelled. On top of that, she gives knowledge to all heroes and intelligence, and it is the skill effect of power of luck by 15 seconds, and on level 40, it works for all the factions. 
Now let's move on to some team formation. First of all, most of the teams you will see will be based on arena matchups. The very basic team I will use will include Arcane Eagle, Arcane Archer with Melee Naga and Dragon Golem in one lane. Below them will have Castle Quadrule, Sister Judicator with maxed out Banner, maxed out Seraph and a Paladin. This team has a lot of flexibility and can be easily improved, which I will explain later. We can also play Darmith with two healers. Seraph sadly is falling behind and although he brings amazing buffs to the team, Priest, Priest is a better choice and works better than Sister, which you can replace to create another team. Move Bird in an open lane, he will stay in range as he is adjacent to Arcane Archer and move Judicator next to Arcane Archer so she can benefit from all the buffs from the Judy and the Banner. Another, another formation you can play is Priest with a flexible uh, defender or an extra damage dealer. You can bench Sister and put another source of damage or add another tank as DG is currently a weaker of the tanks, so that's why Blackguard works well. Although he was doing better than Paladin in most scenarios I run during the live stream. Now there's also a special, a unique rather, uh, thing that Darmif can utilize and it's a ranged Naga who is not doing well with any other hero but Darmif gives us possibility of running her. Although this will reduce the damage done to the tanks as ranged Naga does not utilize Darkness Alignment Emblems. So keep that in mind when you're deciding as sometimes it might work better for you to have melee naga instead. Now when it comes to emblems, let's take a quick look into emblems that I used during the test, starting with tanks. Paladin was using plus 18 gear of times, although legals will work as well. Dragon Golem was wearing plus 19 gear of times emblems as they synergize well with his repair mechanics. Naga as the main damage source was wearing highest casted emblems at plus 35 and darkness enlightenment to help shred in tanks while Seraph was wearing basic everlasting secrets. Arcane Archer was another big investment with plus 30 Path of Assassin set as this is your secondary main damage source while Range Naga was wearing plus 30 Jealousity set and Arcane Eagle was only with plus 22 Path of Assassin casted set. The three supports were non-casted emblem sets in the following order. Judicator was wearing Path of Assassin set but Everlasting Secret will work well too. Sister had Everlasting Secret set as well, as I don't have access to Spring of Immortality, which should work, uh, work well as well. Priest was wearing Ever Everlasting Secret, uh, Secret Emblem set as well. There were only few matchups that I had a chance to try, as my, t as my test server account is not fully rebuilt yet, but it included Darmif against Adela, Fiona, Adrian and Alama. Against Adela, I mirror the basic formation as it meant I'll be using more castle units. Darmif was successful as there was more magic awakening procs on her side allowing Arcane Archer to do way more damage and take down Dragon Golem 3 seconds earlier than Darmif Dragon Golem. Against Fiona, my basic Adela team was losing but with Darmif that was a slaughter and I even upgraded Fiona team by replacing Blackguard with Light Elemental to boost Dark Elemental damage. There was just too much backlane damage for Fiona to handle. Adrian, well I did not have time to test against Adrian on the stream and I think it went quite well for the Fortress mains as I had no idea what the result will be. I first tested Fortress dungeon combo and it was a disaster. For Adrian. Fight ended up in 38 seconds. I changed dungeon to castle and played a more defensive oriented version of Adrian and the result was better for Adrian, but it was still a very one-sided victory. But next week there's a fortress week, so we can expect an upgrade to the fortress team. Alamar, well, if you watched my Arcane Eagle video, you know I could not beat Alamar using the basic formation. I had to try something else. So I replaced Seraph with Priest to add more healing against dungeon AoE damage. The fight was super close until a hundred second mark when Devil Tank has fallen and opened Naga to shred through enemy ranks. Surprisingly enough, my Dragon Golem was able to take the hit and survived. But I still wanted to try something else, maybe it's time that range Naga will shine. Now this is in theory should reduce my tank killing ability but add extra AoE damage pressure to the team. 
that already excels at it with Arcane Eagle and Arcane Archer. Paladin was the first one to fall, while DG was holding up. But this old enemy team charges to get to backline and win. While Naga did a lot of damage, it did not result in the win as Devil has not fallen. As a bonus, I run a 6 unit fight to see who could win. I don't usually do that. But I thought it was another very intense fight, with Darmiv managing to destroy Alamar defenses and securing a win within 24 seconds left on the clock. I believe this matchup can go both ways, depending on who has better artifacts and stat, as although I won without so any casualties, I was not sure I would manage to break the tank line. So let's summarize. The question is, is it worth $100? I would say definitely if you're a tower main and you want to play this game for at least another year. I believe that after recent fix to the nerf to Arcane Eagle, Darmuth will be on pair with Alamar and these two heroes will be the top containers as it used to be between Astral and Dragon Mutare. Thank you guys for watching, stay safe, bye!